Hi team, number 13 on the 53 MTEL practice exam. If a fraction A over B is simplified to its lowest terms, which of the following must be true? A, A or B is a prime number. B, A is less than B. C, A equals 1 and B does not equal 0. Or D, A and B have only 1 as a common factor. There's a lot of places to start. Um, I could answer this very quickly, but I want to take my time. Um, when I look at a problem like this, this is what sticks out. This sentence here, a fraction is simplified into its lowest terms. And I think this is a really good place to start. Um, let's think about this. Let's just focus on this portion right here. A fraction simplified to its lowest terms. And let's, let's actually do some examples of reducing fractions to simplifying fractions to their lowest terms. Because this is, I think if we get this concept, then we'll be able to figure out which must be true. So um, here, let's go to a new screen. And let's just do this a few times. Get the, if we could rush through this problem very quickly, but let's take our time. Let's say I had 12 and I had 18. I want to simplify this to its lowest terms. Well, if I don't automatically know the greatest common factor that goes into both of these, I could just very quickly you know, write out the factors of 12. 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. These, all these numbers go into 12. And what are the factors of 18? 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3, and uh, six. Okay, gotta switch to a different color. Make it creative, all right. Now what is the greatest common factor? Well, in this case, it's six. Six goes into both these numbers. So I could divide 12 and 18 both by six. And if I do that, this becomes a, a two, this becomes a three. Now this fraction is reduced to its lowest terms. How do I know that? I could check it. Let's see, what are the factors of 2? 1 and 2, and what are the factors of 3? 1 and 3. It only has 1 as a common factor. So that's really your rule. A fraction is reduced to its, simplified to its lowest terms, or reduced to its lowest terms, if and only if the denominator and numerator have one factor, one as their common factor. So let me give you some examples now. 2 over 3. How about 3 over 1? or 1 over 4. These are all examples of fractions that the denom numerator and denominator only have one as a common factor, and thus they've they're been simplified to a point where they can't be simplified anymore. Now, let's go back, back in time. There we go. And let's look at that problem. If a fraction A over B is simplified to its lowest terms, and in, our, in your mind you're going to be like 1 fourth, or 2 over 1, or, you know, 2 thirds, which of the following must be true? A or B is a prime number. Well, that works for 2 thirds, right? But it doesn't work for 1 fourth, uh, because 1 fourth is an example where A over B, both A and B, are not prime numbers. What makes up a prime number, by the way? This is a, another conversation, but it's good to know prime numbers are numbers like 2, 3, 5. These are numbers that only have two factors, one in themselves. So what makes four, I mean, what makes one not a prime factor? Well, one only has one as a factor. The number one is the number number one only has one integer, one, that goes into it evenly with no remainder. So it doesn't fit the definition of a prime. And four, four has, you know, one, two, and four go into it. Okay. Sort of digressing there, but A doesn't work. A is less than B. True, that would work for one fourth, but does it work for two over one? No, it doesn't. That uh, disproves B because in this case here, A is actually greater than B with the two over one example. A is equal to B. A is equal to one, but B does not equal zero. Okay, that would work if it was like one fourth, one half, one third. But what about two thirds? 
or actually um, a is clearly two is clearly not equal to one and obviously b is not going to equal to zero this is the problem here a doesn't have to equal one so we cross that off and this final one is the definition that connects what we just did a or b um, have only one common factor and we just said that when when a fraction is reduced to its lowest terms let's say like two over I don't know two over five they only have one as a common factor um, one two I gotta get a different color huh um, two has one and two five has one and five the only factor that they share is one so we know that two over one is reduced to its lowest terms Awesome team. I hope you like this problem. And please keep on sending in your questions. Well, another way to look at this problem is to make sure you understand the basics of what a fraction is. Understand how to simplify fractions in lowest terms. Go back and review what is a prime number? What is a composite number? Go back and figure out how you find out factors of numbers and how you find out common factors of two numbers and then ask yourself how do you find the greatest common factor of two numbers each problem in itself has many different aspects you could study so sometimes it helps to break apart a problem like this understand the different parts and then go back and review and because once you know the answer is D right we could have solved this right away which of the following must be true D we're done and that's how I wanted to start the video. But if, if we did that, we would have missed out on all these little gems, all these, you know, little, uh, these ideas that sort of build up and build your math knowledge. Okay, team, I hope you found this helpful. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.